Hey, what's happening? Okay, I'm only here to talk about the unicorn. That's what I call them anyway. Uh, I, I like to refer to these super crazy stocks as unicorns. Uh, they're very, very rare. The ones that I'm talking about, the ones that go up uh, hundreds or thousands of percent in a day. GLSI is today's unicorn. So uh, I'm going to make a video about it probably later or at least a video that will include it. But uh, I thought it was wrong to not jump on here live and at least at least, uh, you know, take a look at this thing. It's so rare that you don't want to miss it. It's not very, very many times a year, sometimes not even, you know, one a year that you actually see one of these unicorn stocks. So GLSI Green, which Life Sciences Inc. Uh, is is up from five dollars yesterday, or pre market. I think I think pre market it was trading about five bucks. Let me see. Uh, yeah, I don't even know if it had any any volume at all. So, but anyway, yeah, it was about five dollars. You can see, and at this point, it's halted and it's at one twenty nine thirty three. You heard that correctly. $129.33 from $5 pre-market. Uh, this is craziness. <laughs> Absolute unicorn. So, uh, the news, let's look at the news. It says, what do we got here? I haven't even read it yet myself. Uh, shares of Greenwich Life Sciences blasted 2,399% higher in a very active and volatile afternoon trading Wednesday after the Texas-based biopharmaceutical company displayed upbeat results of a Phase 2B trial. Oh my gosh. And we have to look over here right now because it just unhalted. At, <laughs> it's at $90. Oh my God. Imagine if you bought this thing up here. Uh, I, I really hope anybody watching this, um, my subscribers or anybody, would not be buying this up in the 130s. But if you did, imagine you bought this in the 130s or even up here if you were, if you were the guy. Because somebody bought up here or wouldn't have a wick this high. Imagine if you're the guy that bought up here at, at one. Let's see, what's the high? Uh, the high is... 158.07. Imagine if you bought at $158 and then it shot down and got halted. And when it unhalted, before you could even blink your eyes, it was at $90. And you had lost uh, over $68 a share. <laughs> I just can't imagine that. Lose, lose $68 a share in like a minute. Well, I guess with the halt time, you had five minutes, but still. Only only about a minute of actual trading, and you lose $68 a share. Um, hey, they got some people in the chat here. What's up? Chris Chris says a cure for cancer. Yeah, cure for cancer, cancer cure for breast cancer. 100% remission after five years. That is insane. If that stands up and that, that stands the test of all the trials and... Uh, gets FDA approved and that is the case and it's a hundred percent remission that is insane that that's awesome a game changer I mean there's been so many women who and men I think who have suffered from breast cancer and died or lost loved ones to that so it is really amazing um, it's probably that if that turns out to be true and they really did cure breast cancer it's probably the one time that a stock going from five to over a hundred dollars actually kind of makes sense <laughs> of course it's really just because of the fact that the, the floats like 1.5 million there's only like a million and a half shares available to trade of this stock so that's why you get a move like that if anybody's wondering how that's possible um, but Chris A
I hear the term float. Can you briefly explain that? I sure can, Ryan. The term float uh, is the amount of shares that can actually be traded because you'll have shares that are uh, locked up um, by like insiders, institutions and things. And then you'll have the float refers to the amount of shares that can actually be traded intraday. The, the amount of shares that can be bought and sold. So like on this stock here, um, I'm pretty sure that the float is around 1.5 million or 1.6 million. Uh, it's traded 16 million shares. So that means every available share of this stock that can be traded has been traded uh, 10 times over. What they call rotating the float, the float, float rotation is something you'll hear people say uh, when it's traded more shares than the amount that are available. So the entire float has been traded by day traders and whatnot and flipped over uh, over 10 times. You can find it by going to uh, like any, for instance, uh, let's, let, let's, let's just show you live. If you go to Market Watch is a website that's got all kinds of stock news and it's got a screener, intraday screener here. Uh, you can type in up here, uh, G L S I and hit search. It's going to come up with Greenwich um, Life Sciences, which is the name of the company. It's got your price right here. This is going to be lagging, so anybody that's not familiar with sites like this, um, this is not like going to be updating by the millisecond. You know, it's a it's lagging behind. But anyway, you get your market cap, sixty two million. Uh, which is what all of the, the stocks times the price equals your market cap. Um, so your public float is right here. So 1.56 million. That's the number of shares that can be traded of the stock. Uh, let me go back through and see if there's any other questions. Oh, what happened at 9.30 a.m.? Tim was sleeping, honestly. Trader Paul, <laughs> I was sleeping at 9.30 a.m. I actually slept in this morning. I, I snoozed my alarm and then slept way past. I slept through all of pre-market and all the way where I am in uh, central time. The market opens at 830. And yeah, I, I slept through that. <laughs> um, let's see what else. Uh, not every day you watch Cure for Cancer Run. That's true. Very true, Chris. Um... Which are the sympathy plays? I hope so too. Thank you. What are the sympathy plays? Biotech's going to be high. Uh, Finviz, yeah, Finviz. I use Finviz also. Breast cancer plays. Sympathy. There you go. You bet, Ryan. Uh, yeah. So Market Watch or Finviz is another one that's. And sometimes you'll see different numbers at different. Uh, different websites for whatever reason they, they have different numbers like this one says 1.56 million uh, let's see what Finviz says if we go to Finviz uh, da, 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 da. G -L -S -I. and they have 1.74 so there you go it's different at um, two different websites have two different numbers but still pretty close you get the idea it doesn't really matter if it's 1.5 or 1.6 or 1.7 um, the idea is that it's not very many shares so if you look at like um, I don't know what uh, pick a stock um, let's do Netflix for instance they're going to have 435 million shares. So just as an example of like a blue chip stock, a big blue chip stock or something that's uh, got a lot of volume versus something like GLSI that only has 1.5 million shares available. That's the only time you get these moves like this. The only time is when you have the perfect combination of super small short or super small uh, float the float has to be like typically when you see a move like this what i call a unicorn stock 
you're going to see that the float is usually under 5 million. And then you got to get some volume, obviously, to where the entire float is going to be rotating. And then you have to have a good percentage of people that are shorting it. Um, so like I'm sure there was people jumping on this to short it uh, where you see this volume right here. People were probably jumping on it to short the high of day. And then you start squeezing them. And before you know it, you get this epic combination of uh, day traders that love the, the crazy range of, let's see, like this one candle from 64 to uh, almost 80. So you got $16 a share in one little candle there. Uh, day traders obviously are going to be jumping on that. Uh, I don't personally, I'm not going to be trading it when it's like that because it's it's like a, a slot machine, really. It's complete gamble on whether or not it's going to swing down or get halted and unhalt on the way down. Like up here, you might have been thinking that you could buy it and it was going to go up and, and get halted going up farther. And the next thing you know, it goes all the way down to $90 a share. So I don't play them anymore. I used to play them when I was uh, first starting trading. I thought they were exciting and I, and I would do it, but yeah, I've been on the wrong side of it opening down here at $90 and I'm down 10, 20 bucks a share. It's not a good feeling. Uh, let's see. Chris says the breast cancer plays he's got listed there. I don't really know what the sympathy plays are. I'm kind of just uh, getting into the, the market here and like I have not been watching it. I way overslept. Then I had other stuff to do and other errands to run. And then I just kind of jumped on here. My friends in my my uh, uh, group chat of traders were talking about GLSI. So I had to jump on here and check it out. So I don't really know what the sympathy plays are off the top of my head right now. Uh, you missed GLSI. play. Cool, good job, Paul. I haven't even looked at those either. Are they all up big too? All after 10, yeah. This stock would be great here if you, I mean, I would have been excited watching this stock. It just is mind blowing to me when you see a unicorn like this. I would have been pretty excited about it going from five bucks to, uh, I mean, just think of that $5 to $37 move right here. That in itself is, is absolutely insane. And then it comes down uh, after market opens and everything. And this move here, I mean, if you bought it when it was breaking VWAP uh, at a little bit over $20, between $20 and $21, um, and just held it for this number of, of green one minute or five minute candles here, you could have got $10 a share in just this little bitty move right here. It's $10 a share. So I, I just think it's crazy. And realistically, this was a decent setup that somebody could have got in. A lot of times you'll see the unicorns just blast off out of nowhere. But in this case, like you could look and uh, draw somewhat of a uh, pennant. Well, that one's not going to work quite as good as what I anticipated there, but still, you get the point there. It's kind of kind of forming what would have been a, a somewhat of a bull pennant. You got your flag flag pull there, and then a nice pennant, and it kind of consolidates and goes down, and then jumps up. And realistically, this would have been a decent setup that you could have bought. It wasn't really out of nowhere. You could have been watching this after the the giant jump this morning. It could have been on your radar. And you could have uh, bought this nice breakout right here at $30 and very easily made $10 a share, $20 a share without even having to hold through any big dips or being that worried. <laughs> so there's, I'm sure there are some people out there. I wish they'd be in my chat and they could tell me how they, uh, how they bought it right here and then held it all the way up and sold it at 150 <laughs> It'd be so crazy. Stock market's on sale if anyone is looking for other plays. Tesla's on sale. I'll have to check out Tesla. There's Dave. What's up, Dave? Been dealing with LPCN all day. Real shit show. Halted last night. Oh, no.
GLSI was a short killer today. That's for sure, Trader Paul. I'm sure that there are some people that I would not be shocked at all if some accounts blew up. It doesn't have crazy volume, so maybe not as many as you would think. It's only traded uh, 16 million shares of volume. That that's pretty crazy too. Uh, the fact that the stock's gone from five dollars to one fifty-eight, and it's only traded sixteen million shares. Sometimes you'll get them overcrowded, where you get too many too many day traders in there, and it gets overcrowded, and that kind of stops the move from being this crazy. But this is just the perfect combination. I remember years ago, um, I don't know if it was a couple years ago, maybe that we saw Elfin L F I N. Um, I don't know if anybody remembers that or not, but LFIN was another one that went over $100 within a day or two. Uh, KODK this year was a crazy one that went um, way up. Uh, if I want to say from like $5 to $60, somewhere around there. I don't know if you guys can see me or not. It keeps giving me this error that uh, YouTube is not receiving enough video. It says it's buffering. That's how I ran across your site. I was looking for people that were trading it and blew up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I haven't heard of any. I know my, my friends all missed out on it just like I did. We, we didn't. Me and uh, my, my group chat, uh, none of us traded it. Well, I guess actually one guy did trade it. He, he traded it from... Uh, I think he said, I don't know where my phone is, but wherever my phone is, I was going to look at it. I think he traded it from 16 to uh, 20 or something like that. He just scalped it for a, a little piece, but it was like $4 a share. <laughs> That's why day traders are on this and why it's so exciting. It's crazy whenever you can just take a tiny little piece of the move and it's like $5. Trader Paul remembers uh, remembers uh, Elfin. Yes, yeah, Spy. There you go, Dave. I was trying to think of that. I was thinking PIC for some reason, but it was SPI. That was it. Everybody probably remembers uh, Dries. Um, that was like one of the most famous one from years ago. That's been a lot of years ago though, but uh, dries went from a dollar or a couple dollars to over a hundred dollars. Everyone seems to always remember dries. Spy. When did Spy go crazy? That was this year, right? Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, that was a crazy one from uh, $2 or so. Let me get to this. Oh, it was only a, it was in the $1 range. So $1 to a high of uh, $46. And I think it after hours, I want to say after hours, it actually went higher than that. But I could be wrong. The only other one really exciting today was... Uh, or that I saw anyway was XBIO. That one was uh, up a lot. Normally people would be all over this and it has traded way more shares. So 177 million shares. So I guess people are all over it, but uh, it's not near as exciting as the other one, GLSI. Uh, YQ was one that I saw that was kind of flagging, I think, earlier. Yeah. Whoops. There we go. Yeah, this is another one I was watching that was kind of forming a, uh, a bull pennant and then broke out for a nice little scalp there. If you guys can't tell, that's my favorite pattern. That's what I'm always looking for is uh, not necessarily a fully developed bull pennant uh, or bull flag, but just that idea. You know, I, I love, you know, short short trend lines and then as it breaks that going long for a scalp uh, you just to me it's one of the highest odds setups you can do it in all kinds of different time frames and it's uh, pretty high odds GSI, GLSI there we go uh, maybe it's gonna unhalt no maybe not 
thought we might see it on halt, but it has not yet. I just want to watch it to see what happens with it. Drys was nuts. Chris A remembers Drys, yes. Can't remember why I remember MGT, but I, I do remember uh, trading that for some reason. Let's see, when was this halted? 255, so, at yeah, we should wonder when it's going to unhalt. Let's see what the halt page has to say about it. This is another handy site if you guys don't uh, know about it. NASDAQTrader.com, and it'll have, uh, this is one I have bookmarked because it'll have trading halts and the halt code and everything. LUDP, so it's a volatility halt. Resumption time, uh, 2.57, it says, which is uh, obviously not the case. Oh, halt time, 2.57, resumption time. That's odd. Okay, well, anyway. This is a pretty handy little thing. And you can look at the trading uh, halts codes. If you click on uh, the halt codes, you can kind of see the description and uh, what exactly they mean. The ones you see a lot, you see T1 and T2 quite a bit. Um, LUDP is the most common, uh, which is volatility trading halt because um, it's moving too far, too fast. Uh, let's see what other ones you see a lot. You see M a lot, volatility uh, trading pause is another one. Another one of those is M. So anyway, just kind of a handy site that uh, I keep bookmarked for stock trading. Yeah, that's why I remember it. It was the it was the McAfee one. Yeah, the the antivirus guy, <laughs> McAfee, made a lot of money. Thought all stocks traded that way. Yeah, <laughs> isn't that the way it works? I actually remember um, making a bunch of money on uh, Delcath. I think it was D C T H. I want to say Delcath. I don't think it's around anymore. I'm pretty sure it changed names or it uh, is gone. I'm not really sure. I can I, let me see. Delcath. DCTH. Yeah, it's still there, I guess. Yeah, that was one of the ones, but this was years ago whenever I took my first trade on it. Like five years ago. I don't know can't remember but for some reason that ticker stands out and I remember that being one that I made a bunch of money on I remember I was actually uh, I, I bought it and then I was watching it on the E-Trade app on my phone uh, driving to Kansas City which is not too far from where I live and I remember looking at that and thinking oh man I'm up $500 I'm up $1,000 this is awesome trading is awesome <laughs> Yeah, T T one two is something you never want to see. Very true. Scammer. He's in jail, huh? I didn't know that. That's good. He should be in jail. Is level up, level down. L U L D. Yeah, 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 yeah. Remember that one? Can't remember the catalyst. Me neither. But for some reason it sticks in my mind. Anyway, 
I don't suppose I will stay on here too long. I kind of wanted to wait and see when it resumed. I kind of wanted to watch it and see what happened. I just thought it'd be like a, a watch party, you know, jumping on here and watching the crazy unicorn stock GLSI and seeing how it turns out. Um, didn't really have anything planned to talk about though, so. I just thought I needed to commemorate the unicorn. Every time I see one like that, I, I feel like I need to go live and watch it and talk about it. Uh, let's see. Just curious how this was doing. Will XBIO bounce here? I do not know. And where's my news? Come back, news. Why are you not here? I lost my news. It's hiding. Hmm. Well then. Silly news went hiding. Yep, you too. Where's the scanner at? The scanner is gone. No more scanner. E-Trade robbed me of my scanner. Hello, the missing link. What's up? Thanks for subscribing, and then I'm glad you like it. Yes, E Trade, stupid E Trade. I, I chatted with them. Uh, I did do E Trade live chat on that one that one live video I was doing. I was chatting with them, but they don't know anything. The reality is the customer service at E-Trade, I'm pretty sure, is farmed out to uh, like India or somewhere. I could be wrong, but um, when I've called them, they a lot of times have an accent. And then when you are talking to them in the, the, the chat boxes, they don't really know what's going on. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. I get it. They're, they're just farming out their car, their customer service like a lot of big companies do to the, the lowest bidder but they don't really know what's going on they don't really know why the scanner's gone all they know is their little programmed answer that oh it's gone yeah that's not coming back that's what they told me why why what ryan why is the scanner gone Uh, the scanner they told me was uh, the customer service didn't have a reason. They just said it was being discontinued from E-Trade Pro and that uh, they had no plans for it to return. And they said that we could use Power E-Trade's scanner, but I don't like Power E-Trade scanner. I know, the E-Trade scanner was legit, Mr. Missing Link, Mr. or Mrs. Missing, Missing Link. I know. I'm pretty pissed about it too. It was my favorite thing about each. I actually like the charts of E-Trade, the classic charts. Most people, um, the other platforms and stuff are using the newer charts, the upgraded newer zooming charts. Um, they don't look exactly like this. I just like the, the old school um, E-Trade charts. I don't know why. I guess it's just because I've, got, I've gotten used to them. But yeah, it's kind of like my security blanket, I guess. Uh, I've gotten used to them, so I don't really want to change them and go to different charts. When I trade with CMEG, CMEG charts are not this way, but a lot of times I'll have E-Trade, uh, my charts open on E-Trade with the same stock, and I'll be kind of watching my E-Trade chart, but trading on CMEG on uh, another monitor. The, the uh, scanner being gone is 
according to somebody on Reddit. Somebody wrote a thing on Reddit, and I've seen it several times since then, that their scanner was provided by a third party. It wasn't E-Trade's scanner. They were using some third party um, to get their scanner and then putting it on their platform. And I guess the rights ran out or that third party contract was done or something along those lines and they decided just not to do it anymore. Not cool. It was. Uh, I like the charts, uh, like I said, but my favorite thing was the scanner. Um, when I trade on CMEG, I was actually getting ready to open another brokerage account or two to make some YouTube content on and just to try them out. Uh, either TD Ameritrade or Lightspeed or somebody else. Um, maybe even Webull, uh, but I was going to use my E-Trade scanner to find stocks. It's just my favorite scanner. So it really bums me out that it's gone. There are other scanners out there, but I don't want to pay for a scanner. Uh, trade ideas is good, but I don't want to pay for it. Um, I think there's one called uh, Stocks to Trade, Tim Sykes. Um, scanning thing stocks to trade a lot of people like that but I don't want to pay for that either scanner gone being a deal breaker yeah I agree I'm uh, not gonna be trading with them very long I'm right now I'm shopping around for other brokers and trying to decide if I want to open another brokerage account and I'm going to put more money in my CMEG account and I'm gonna trade that more actively I haven't been trading that much, but I still have an account there. So uh, I'm going to fund that up a bit and probably trade that more. And then uh, I'm looking at other brokers. So so yeah, uh, Ryan, the, there are other scanners, like I said, but they're, let's see, let's see what trade ideas costs this is one that a lot of people use trade ideas uh, let's see let's see what it costs so let's bring it over here this is trade ideas tons of people use trade ideas uh, but the cost let's see if I can find the cost. Where is your pricing? Leading brokers, investors use trade ideas technology, shouldn't you? Ross uses it, so, you know, I gotta give him that, but. It seems like the price, oh, there it is. I just missed it. It's right there. Pricing. Choose your plan. Pick the plan that's right for you. Choose the annual plan, say $460 compared to monthly billing. So yeah, there you go. You can have a free demo, but it's 20 minutes delayed, okay? I don't need 20 minutes delayed because I can go to Market Watch or FinViz or anywhere and uh, screen for stocks and have something that's more updated than 20 minutes uh standard is a thousand dollars and 68 a thousand sixty eight dollars a year and premium is two thousand two hundred sixty eight dollars a year to me that is just a, a lot of money for a scanner what you can do anybody who doesn't know this is go to ross with warrior trading like for me anyway I'm, it depends on your strategy and uh, the kind of trader you are but for me I'm a scalper and I trade very similar to Ross with warrior trading so you can go to Ross's um, YouTube page if anybody doesn't know I'll show you here um, let me see let me see let me see yeah so you can go to uh, Ross there he is right there warrior trading there's a lot of people that do this I'm not just uh, just showing Ross there's lots of people other than Ross that do this but Ross every day streams the his pre-market list of like what he's watching 
and as a scalper who is basically looking for the hottest momentum plays of the day so i'm looking for gappers big big gap ups um, and the highest percent gainers and that's what ross trades so he he streams it every morning if we look at uh, let's see videos we can look at five hours ago today which is this right here and you can see that you don't even really need a scanner because you can go to ross's page and uh Every day, every every morning, he's streaming what he's watching. And you can look right here and see his top gainers, AYTU, NTEC, RCON. So you can check out his, his top gainers of the day. And there you go. So you don't really need a scanner because you can do that. You can go to YouTube and uh, find live. It's going to be a little bit of lag time because there is a little bit of lag time with YouTube. But... Um, you can go to stock scanner. So yeah, if you didn't have a scanner and you didn't want to pay for it and you didn't want to, uh, you didn't know what else to do, you could just go to YouTube, type in stock scanner, hit search, then you can go to filter and you can go to, uh, live over here. And there you go. There's going to be countless live uh, scanners on YouTube for free so there you go here's a, here's a live scanner right now you can check out the live scanner it can show you RCKT um, description running up quickly uh, XBIO we were talking about that earlier so there it is right here on this YouTube video so the point is you actually don't have to have a scanner you can get by without one so for me uh, I'm not panicking. I would much rather have my scanner in the corner of my screen that I have the presets on and that's running and it's nice and handy. But uh, it's not the end of the day because you really all you need to do is find the, the hot stocks and then from there you just watch them and look for the uh, the setups you're, you're wanting to trade. So. Hello, what's up? If it's, uh, did I help you with my email back? I don't know if it helped you or not. Let's go to GLSI. Still halted. Now this is where people are starting to panic if they're in GLSI. Is anybody in here that's watching this in GLSI? There you go. Now, Ryan, you owe me $100. Just Venmo me. <laughs> I'm curious if Nafisa is... I always feel weird when I say your name, Nafisa. I feel like I'm saying it wrong. But anyway, uh, hopefully my email helped. Did it help? What's up, SZ? We're getting a few people in here now. Got got uh, 13 people in here right now. Cool, cool. <laughs> I think GLSI is going to be going down after the halt. Uh, I would say so, yeah. If I was gonna gonna guess, I would say it will unhalt and it will drop and then it will bounce a little bit. After that, I don't know. And you never know. These things are crazy. Maybe it'll come out of the halt and shoot up, but I just gotta think that if I was in this halt, if I was 
you know, holding. Is anybody in here holding? I don't think anybody in here is holding this stock, but if I was holding this stock and the halt was going on longer and longer, I'd be pretty uh, worried at this point because sometimes these things will get halted and they'll stay halted um, sometimes for days or weeks while they get investigated, people file lawsuits against them and all that, all that wonderful stuff. Uh, and then like, Elfin, L-F-I-N. I'm pretty sure that's what happened with that one. I don't even, I think it might even be dis delisted. I'll have to see. Um, for some reason I was thinking it was, but maybe not. No, that's still there. Let's see if we can find the ridiculous halt at some point. No, I do not see it. Anyway, I don't know, but I do remember, I'm pretty sure that LFIN was one that got halted and then had investigations and everything going on and it was halted for a very long time. I think that was the one. It was uh, weeks, I'm pretty sure. I want to find the guy that shorted it at 150. Yeah, exactly. Those are some big kahunas to be shortened up there. And they're sitting pretty right now. They've made over $60 a share, and they're just sitting there, you know, counting their money like, oh, man, I just can't wait for this thing to open up in the 80s or the 70s. It's getting way too long. You're right. It's... uh. It's getting very nerve wracking. What's up, CZ, SZ? I think I already said hi to you, but hi again anyways. I wanna find, find the time, let's see, let's see. Oliver, how long did it take you to become profitable? It's taken me forever. Yeah, me too. This is the first year that I am profitable and um, I'm not profitable by a lot. I'm kind of, I teeter back and forth. So this is the first year I would say that I have an actual real grasp, uh, like a strategy, you know, for the last several years, I've been all over the place. I've tried so many different things and I think that's the key to getting good at trading is that, well, for one thing, you have to learn all of it, learn the techn technical analysis and learn everything and start getting a feel for it. But then uh, a lot of it is just discipline. Okay, cool. Okay, so uh, yeah, what were we talking about? profitable yet yeah, I've been trading since let's see uh, five years I think this is my fifth year or fourth year let's see I started in 15 the end of 15 I think yeah I think this is my fifth year also so Everybody's at different different uh, speeds, so don't don't get too discouraged, Oliver. I I actually lost about somewhere around fifty grand over the last several years trading. I just could not. I didn't have a strategy though. I was trading everything all over the place. From uh, I'd be. You know, going long, I'd be try shorting for a while. A lot of my big losses have been shorting. Uh, if you watch Tim Sykes or Tim Gratani or a lot of those people, you see that they make a lot of their money, the bulk of their money, shorting these momentum stocks. And so I thought, and mind you, I'd been uh, trading as a long bias trader for a long time. So then I was like, oh. If they're all making the money shorting, then what am I doing? Tim Sykes uh, does um, bounce plays. 
typically. Um, but he's, he's buying the, the big crash for a bounce. But that to me was not a very good strategy because as somebody with uh, not very much experience, you end up buying the wrong bounce many times. You're, you're just catching falling knives. So I don't know if it's the best strategy for beginners. Uh, but anyway, then I got on, on track with shorting because I saw Gritani and a bunch of those people. At, at that time, I was a member of the Tim Sykes um, chat room and Penny Stocking Silver and all that. So I kept seeing them making money shorting. And I thought, well, that's the problem is that I'm trying to go long on these stocks. And they're making all their money shorting. So I switched gears and tried to learn shorting and spent a bunch of time shorting. And that led to a lot of my big losses. My $10,000 loss in one trade was a short gone wrong. So, yeah, it's been at 90 for a long time. It's probably, I don't know. I'm kind of wondering if it's going to open if it's going to open back up today or not. It may very well not. Anyway, yeah, so I've, I've tried a lot of different things. I've tried shorting and going long and buying breakouts and buying and dip buys uh, like Tim Sykes, a lot of different stuff, but never really an actual strategy of uh, with discipline. The key, I think, to me finally starting to turn the corner, and I'm not saying I'm a great trader because I'm not. I'm not making millions of dollars or none of that. But I've just finally gotten profitable by taking almost all my money out of my accounts and trading really small to where I don't have much for emotions uh, and then uh, being disciplined. So I'm only looking for a few patterns and that's it. I'm not just buying all willy nilly like, you know, for the last several years, I would have been buying out of, a you know, oh, it got halted. I'm going to buy that just to buy it. Well, it's not really a strategy. I guess you could call it a strategy, but it's not a very high odd. Oh my gosh, unhalted at under fifty dollars. Wow, that almost makes me sick for <laughs> for people. I mean, if you bought it at all, basically this afternoon, you just got screwed. And of course, it's uh, it appears to be immediately halted again. Wow. That's that's scary. That's unbelievably scary. Imagine if you bought up here in the $150 and you just lost a hundred dollars a share. That is insane. Yep, SZ, it was for a second. I forget that you guys have a lag time. This YouTube lags behind, so I'm kind of seeing it. And then, uh, I don't know, it's kind of hard to get used to because I'm, I'm seeing it, and then uh, by the time you guys see it, it's been like, uh, I don't know, 30 seconds or something. 20 seconds. I'm not sure what the lag time is. Oh, let's see. I put in my real account and it worked. There you go. Uh, I thought that that might be the case. I, I did think it was probably either the account or that uh, CLO. I agree. I use the same setup pretty much every day. Paul says, what do I do with GLSI? I've been sitting at this halt with a 40%. Oh, no. You're in GLSI. It's been at 90 for almost now. I just, I just realized that you're in it, Antonio. What did you buy in at? Shorting all you need is one GLSI to get wiped out, Trader Paul says. Amen to that. What is a Slack page? Somebody has has been, I can't remember who, but somebody was telling me that I need to do a Discord, but I don't even know what that is. So 
I guess I need to get with it with the technology. Like there's, I guess there's trader discord groups or something. I need to figure out what that is and start doing that. Uh, or get a website with a, a chat or do something, I guess, better than this YouTube thing that is slow and lagging. I want to short, but I messed up all my trades and will get banned on Robinhood for 90 days if I sell GLSI. So I don't know if I should hold. Wow, that's a toughie. I'm just looking for some op opinions because I'm lost. Okay. Slack is better. Is Slack like YouTube? I need to figure this out. I'll have to, I'll have to let me Google this. What is Slack? Slack technologies. Where work happens, it says. Welcome to your new HQ. Better way to communicate. Interesting. Okay. Get a Slack group. Seems, seems like a lot of people are saying that. Okay. I'll check into this Slack thing. Antonio, what did you buy at? Are you still in here? got bought by Salesforce interesting Salesforce I've, ho I've heard of but I can't say I know that much about that either apparently I'm not really into the the whole technology thing which is why my YouTube stuff is not uh, amazing you know um, <laughs> I'm kind of just figuring it all out I, I just whenever I started making YouTube videos in March I just started the uh, learning how to edit and do all that stuff. I'm watching GLSI now because it's opened. And I think it might be halted again already. It appears to be halted again. And hold it again. I use Slack to communicate with coworkers. Interesting. So is it like a screen share? Unicorn GLSI. Anybody that's just tuning in, we're actually picking up a few more viewers. So hit the like button if anybody's in here and likes uh, chatting and, and doing this. Helps the old algorithm get some more people in here, maybe. I work in IT with Salesforce for CEO that uses them. So you know, yeah, you know a lot more than I do about technology and stuff. Everything that I do on YouTube has come uh, from me watching other YouTube videos <laughs> and having them explain to me that I need to make a description and I need to do all this stuff for SEO and um, the thumbnails, how to make a thumbnail. Uh, I've learned pretty much all of that from YouTube. Uh, before that, I was not very... I don't, I don't want to say I wasn't computer savvy. I've always been good at like the internet and... Uh, 
uh, I don't know, trading and all that type of stuff, technology-wise, but just never done, uh, I don't know, creating things on the internet, I guess. I want to know if Antonio's in here still. Antonio, did you did you go away from us? Where's Antonio? Come back here, Antonio. Is it is it all of year or all of her? I noticed that there's a that there's an eye in there, so we'll do some knowledge sharing. I like it. Yeah, I'll have to look into this Slack thing. Seems like that's a, a lot of people seem to like it, so Maybe we can make us a Slack group. If you copy that link, I shared you can join the work group or create and build your own. I didn't know you shared a link. Where did I? I missed this. I don't see a link. Sounds like Olivia, but Olivia, 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 Olivia. Is there anyone in here that's not from, uh, that's not in the United States? I do get views on my channel uh, from, from other countries sometimes, and I always think that's pretty cool. to your HQ. I feel like this is kind of boring. I always uh, question whether or not I should delete this after. It's fun whenever we're doing it live, but then I, I'm like, I don't know if anybody would uh, want to go back and watch uh, me, and, me and some other people just chatting or not. Mostly just watching GLSI sit here uh, halted for <laughs> the whole afternoon. We've been uh, doing this live stream for almost an hour and it's only traded for like a total of a minute or two. <laughs> the R is silent with an accent on the E. All right, well, I'm pretty sure that I'm butchering it then. Uh, maybe I should just call you O. <laughs> Boosted Black Cherry got in at 13, out at 120. Wow, really?
from international beer from West Africa. Wow, that's awesome. West Africa, that's so awesome. Awesome that Boosted apparently got in at 13 and out at 120. And less Boosted is just yanking my chain. If that's the case, that is amazing. You bought <laughs> at 13 and got out at 120. for Trader Paul. Cool. This is great. I learned much better by doing without all the chaos. I've not figured out Discord very well. It's very busy. Yeah, I've never even done Discord. Just some of my friends. I'm in a, um, I've got, I started a uh, signal group chat of stock traders um, with, well, actually they started the group chat, but then I kind of got them all into stock trading and now they're all <laughs> trading in the stock market so we have this little group in signal uh, which is like a little uh, secure chat group of me and my friends and we talk about the stocks and stuff and uh, that's what we do anyway I was none of us I think actually only one of us traded GLSI though let's see I'm in discord but alerts this is great It's so cool that, that Nefesa is in Africa. In at 38, out at 118. That's pretty awesome. Trailing stop got me out. I'm glad you like it, Ryan. And that I just can't get over boosted being in at 13 and out at 120. Um, Jules is awesome also. In at 38 and out at 118 is pretty, pretty awesome. What'd your profit look like, uh, Jules? How much? How much did everybody make on it? <clears throat> I need to find my phone. My phone is that. Um, see what my friend bought and sold at. I can't. I don't know. Oh, there it is. Ha. Huh. Let's see. Oh, he bought it sixteen and sold it twenty five, he said, so he made nine dollars a share. It just opened back up. GLSI is back up open.
Got super lucky, 5% set first trailing. That's awesome. Trading is always better with a little bit of luck on your side. This thing is just nuts though. I mean, if you just look at how it opened up out of the halt at 53, it's already at 65. So it's it's gone up $10 a share in this one little bitty tiny move there. Uh, that's just mind blowing. I love it. What's the AI unicorn? A humble Robin Hooder. There's tons of Robin Hooders. I think uh, a lot of people that have found my channel are Robin Hooders. There's a uh, during the pandemic, there's been a crazy amount of an, an influx of, of new traders into the market, which is great. I, I like it. Obviously, I like it because I, I like my YouTube channel growing. It's pretty cool. But uh, I think everybody should know how to trade the stock market. There's more money made in uh, the stock market uh, than anywhere else. It just is such an awesome place to make money. Where else can you click a few buttons on your screen at home and make money? That's that's when I fell in love with the stock market. Anybody that knows my uh, story or watched my earlier video about my story, I've done lots of different stuff. Hey, JMIA. I, I uh, remember JMIA when it was an IPO. I'm on Robin Real Money. Had $1,600 free sitting at 12 k now. Wow. That's awesome. They did flag me for day trading. Made some money with LAZR and GMIA. Yep. It's a trading app for hours. I closed my screen. It is, yeah. Arlington Asset Investment. Hmm. Now it's all the way to seventy four dollars. Oops, seventy five, seventy six. <laughs> it's unbelievable. It just keeps going. 78. Paul is right. And if you've gone... From... 1600 to 12k then 25s right around the corner sixteen hundred to twelve K is impressive. Discord is wise guy investing. Interesting. 
is it mostly swing trading or uh, long-term investments or what do they, what do they do or what have what do they do and what have you made your money at GLSI is at 88 now. That is so crazy. It's a dangerous game with uh, GLSI, but it's also exciting and a ton of opportunity. I just don't think it's a it's, I don't know, it's a difficult thing to trade when it's getting halted constantly and going up $10 a share in a minute or down, up or down, $10 a share in a minute. It's already back down to uh, 78 It was just at 88 so it's dropped $10 a share. Craziness. Seventy-five dollars, seventy-three dollars. Wow. Let's put it on the bigger screen over here. Actually, I remember somebody saying SNDL earlier. was one that ran the other day that I, I traded that the other day. can see it a little bit better just got in and got out got in at 77 missed the 87 got out at 80 it's it is so dangerous <laughs> so dangerous very choppy and tricky you get a unicorn once in a while, but a setup can pay every day. Amen. Amen to that. Like I was saying earlier, and, and what I've, I don't know, I probably got lost, uh, lost track and stumbled off on some other, uh, <laughs> some other tangent. But um, I think the key is discipline, at least for me anyway. It's, it's emotions also and position size. If you trade too big, your motions get get in there uh, I've got a friend that is always trading too big and he is in these swings it's what I used to do too so I, I understand it fully because whenever I was trading um, with uh, 45 to fifty thousand dollar account when I first started and I was having these multiple thousand dollar up days and down days and I remember how emotional I was and how I be holding overnight or something and just be a wreck waiting for uh, the pre-market to open and wondering where it was going to be if it was going to gap up or down and so yeah I think trading within your means to where you're not super emotional is a big part of being consistent and the other part is um, discipline 
first you have to know the patterns and you have to be able to see what's going on and see the, the patterns as they play out. But then you have to have the discipline to only trade them. Hopefully you guys can't hear my uh, children yelling and fighting in the background. Thousand dollars a day keeps a full time job away. Amen. Open SNDL or IBIO are my unicorns. SNDL uh, was up the other day. I remember trading it. I don't know about IBIO other than IBIO hits the scanners. Well, when I actually had a scanner before E Trade took it, it would hit the scanner quite a bit. Yes, sir. Me, thousand a day keeps the full time agenda, full time job away. I love that. If I could make a thousand dollars a day consistently, I would be absolutely tickled. Uh, that'd be about two hundred and sixty thousand a year. I think there's roughly two hundred and sixty trading days in a year. Um, yeah, fifty two times five. 260 and then there's some holidays in there so probably more like 250 or 255 or something trading days yeah i'd be happy with 250 grand a year um, from sitting at my computer trading and then whatever i make on youtube be just gravy on top of that for you guys that are uh in here live i will announce that i finally make money with youtube i haven't made a video about it yet I'm going to at some point make my uh, the video that every YouTuber makes. You know how much money I make with such and such subscribers. You'll be shocked. You know that that whole uh, thing. And then if you're lucky, it goes viral. But I'm sure mine will not because uh, it's not that much money. But I did finally make money with YouTube, and that my goal, my first goal with YouTube was to get monetized. And to do that, you have to have. 4,000 watch hours and 1,000 subscribers. So I reached that goal. Um, and then my next goal was to make my first dollar with YouTube. Uh, that was another goal I had. And I reached that. And then I recently reached another milestone. Uh, I think it was like the day before Thanksgiving, somewhere around there. I crossed over $1,000 with YouTube um, earnings. So. That was a pretty awesome, awesome feeling. I've made over $1,000 with YouTube. That's not very much money if you figure it out per hour because it takes a lot of time. Even just doing, I mean, we've been live streaming this for over an hour. And, you know, that's quite a bit of time. I could be doing other things because I have more than one YouTube channel. I have my kiddos. Uh, I got other stuff I need to be doing. I, I work... Uh, with my brother on at his media company so I need to be uh, editing some other stuff but anyway it takes a bunch of time uh, so if you figure up all the hours I've spent doing YouTube videos and making thumbnails and uh, editing and all that stuff it's not very much per hour but still pretty excited about it Another milestone uh, was yeah, making a thousand dollars. Making my first dollar was a big was a big deal because it meant that I didn't just do this YouTube thing for nothing. Uh, and then making a thousand was pretty cool. And I'm hoping to I wanted to get to 1,750 subscribers by the end of the year, but it's looking like that's not going to happen. Uh, we only got about uh, 22 days or whatever left, so. Kind of unlikely, but you never know. It's you awesome, wonderful people here that, that have made that $1,000 possible. So thank you so much. I'd like to get my YouTube channel to make $1,000 a day and make $1,000 a day trading. Now that would be living the dream. cool thing about YouTube um, is, and I guess the stock market too really they're kind of hand in hand because you know if you buy a, a stock as long as it's 
you know, gonna assuming that it's gonna go up and appreciate in value with the stock market or buy an index fund or whatever, it's gonna make money uh, while you sleep. It's just going up, and that's what I love about YouTube is that when I make a video, I can wake up the next day and it's got more views. So it's made money while I slept. Pretty cool. RH earnings call today. Okay, that'd be cool. It might that might be uh, worth checking out. Let's check out what other stuff did into the close. What what did XBIO do? It's done nothing but fade. Basically, it's following the 50 moving average um, <laughs> right alongside it. That that purplish bluish line is the 50 moving average, and yeah, it's uh it's just fading right underneath that. I don't know what the news was. My awesome thing decided to let me let me do this. Let me get this. Make a new news. I like having my news down here. Or I can see the headline. And then we will link it. Link one. There we go. More than quadruples on massive volume after partners upbeat trial news. So XBIO had trial news with its partner. Cool. Let's check out RH. We're talking about RH having earnings. Look at that swing. That's a big swing. Looks like it was all the way down there to 433 and as high as 481. That's, that's a pretty good swing. That's a $50 per share swing right there in a matter of minutes. Now it's kind of playing out, uh, letting the news shake out. That's the way I, I, I think it's interesting to watch earnings when they come out. And there's, you know, people that are like, oh, it's going, it's going to skyrocket. And it goes way up and then it'll swing and go way down, swing back. And then the news kind of gets digested. And then a lot of times then you'll see the true direction. So something to kind of watch if it, if it kind of consolidates there and then we start seeing it go down, it's more likely that it will uh, continue to go down. Once people, there's always people that are jumping on it and misinterpreting the earnings. And then after a few minutes, people have time, have time to kind of skim through and get the gist of what's really going on with the earnings. And then it kind of picks a, a true direction. Sometimes it gets turned on its head if they have uh, the, uh, what's it called? Uh, why can't the, the guidance. If the guidance comes out later, then you really have interesting things play out. You might have uh, the earnings be up and revenues be up, and then the guidance will completely destroy the stock. Thanks for coming by, Ryan. I'm going to have to get off here as well. Uh, i got other stuff I need to get done. got nine likes on this which is pretty cool and over a hundred playbacks so that's a pretty successful live stream I think what does that equate to for money like uh, 103 uh, I've made probably three bucks from this live stream so thanks guys Three dollars more than I had before. So maybe someday this trading uh, YouTube channel will take off to the point where I make more money doing this than I do trading. Uh, that would be pretty cool. Actually, some days that does happen because there's some days I don't even trade. Like today, I haven't even traded. <laughs> I woke up late. I didn't even take any trades today. So I've actually made more money with YouTube today. I'm going to get off here because I think you guys are kind of uh, 
winding down and I am too and the markets closed uh, 20 minutes ago so unless anybody has anything else to uh, chat about let's close down out of this thing and I will uh, go focus on some other th other stuff I gotta get done gotta take the cat to the vat or the, the cat to the vat wow <laughs> the cat to the vet yeah you gotta take the cat to the vet so got some kind of infection or something going on so I need to get that done get her some meds take care of the kitty cat and uh, let's just get out of here Do some vids on SPACs for swing trading. I could. I'm just not that good at uh, swing trading. Wow, GLSI is going back up again. Look at it go. Thing is, it's got a double top though. If it breaks that double top at 87, 73 or so, like 88 ish, if it can break that double top, might see it go uh, crazy again. I mean, it already is crazy, but. Right now, it's kind of hanging around that 200 moving average. I'm not very good at swing trading, Paul. When I do uh, swing trade in, in our little... Uh, group message when I've put out swing trading ideas um, I'm lucky if I'm right half the time I don't know for some reason I'm just not very good at it I think it's because that there's so much that can go wrong and like I'm better at predicting like the reason that I'm a scalper I've done I've done lots of different types of trading and the reason that I'm a long scalper is that I feel like I can predict um, a very short term move but I don't feel like I'm good at predicting longer term moves so many different things happen I just think that like, whenever I have like whenever I have uh, tried to swing swing play and made a call in our group or, or uh, put a pick out there like hey this is a good one to swing trade and then the next thing I know the market tanks, um, the overall market will go down, or there'll be a bunch of bad earnings in the sector of the, the stock that I'm trying to swing. And the next thing you know, it's down because of factors that are not really having to do with the stock. But still, you know, I end up losing money on it. And people that followed me in that, in that group, and hey, I thought you said it was going to go up. I'm like, well, you know, I can't account for the fact that the market is going to um, have some kind of bad vaccine news or some kind of bad uh, uh, COVID cases are up or whatever and the market goes down and it drags that stock down with it so exactly there's too many unknown things when I'm trying to do it long term that's why I scalp is because it's like you know in the next one or two minutes is something going to change Probably not. The odds are in my favor that if I can predict this little move that for the next minute or two, it's probably going to go in that direction. So I feel comfortable doing that. Okay, I'm going to get off here.
have a great rest of the evening. Thank you guys so much for the support. Going to get out of here and go make some dinner or something. Peace.